Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Was Cheated and Became Red Dragon of Remin Part 4. Before we start please go support ZBX6779 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Part 11. Argus and the Abominations. Issei was just sitting on the bed in the hotel room looking at the lamp. He didn't feel like joining the others cause it's too much of a crowd, after an hour or so Crow comes into the room through the window. Issei. Hey Crow. Crow changes back to his human form. Crow. Hey kid, it's my turn to guard the lamp. They say. Alright. See ya in the sky. He gives him the lamp and flies out the window. He goes to the tallest tower, sits on it and enjoys the view. Greg. It's nice. They say. Yeah. Greg. There's something you should know. Deactivate the gear and look at your arm. He does as he's told notices that half of his arm has red scales. They say. The dragon's power is building up. Greg. It is, it will continue to do so to point you turn into a full-blooded dragon. They say. I just know there's a butt coming. Greg. Yes. They say. Oh boy. Greg. You're turning into a dragon and you've been betrayed by all your lovers, when you turn into a dragon you'll suffer the cursed dragon's fear. The dragons fall. They say. Greg. When that happens you'll die and being a dragon gives you great resilience. Dot dot which makes the death slow and painful. But there's another way, let your feeling out, stop dividing them and let them flow. A dam can only last for so long. They say. Greg. Yang likes you, you know. They say. I'm not ready Drag I don't know if I ever will be right now none of that matters. Remnant needs us. Greg. Then learn to love again partner, the people here aren't driven my desires as much as those back in our dimension. They say. We really aren't in our dimension. I'm a stray devil I'm surprised my pieces haven't changed. Greg. Because they already mutated due to your promotions, but they are a bit unstable, your dragon transformation might be the cause. They say. I'm basically part devil, part dragon with another dragon inside me. Greg. Yes but you'll be more dragon than devil, how long till you turn into a full dragon is unknown. Probably because I'm keeping your emotions divided. They say. So if you stop doing that then I'll turn into a dragon even faster. Greg. Yes. They say. Psy dot will think of something. He goes back to the top and spends the day there, just enjoying the view. It's almost sunset now and he's hungry. He walks over to the edge of the building and leaps off. Issei dives straight down, he felt the rush of the cool air caress his being as he looked straight down. A few seconds before hitting the ground, he spread his wings and took off flying to a nearby diner, after having a late lunch, he paid and flies out. He then cruises through the air for a while until he reaches the pier, he sees RWBY, JNPR, and John's sister with her wife and son. There are people surrounding Pura, asking for her autograph, taking pictures with her. Pura looks like she's having fun, but she's not, John and the others try to shoo them away. He then looked at his arm and summoned the gear to hide it. They say. Nora. We see you. He looks at them with a small smile. They say. Not like I'm hiding. He then lands next to them, the people immediately recognize those wings. The devil of beacons stood before them, they all kept their distance then backed away. Hurrah. Thanks you guys. I never liked all the attention. John. Well now you're free to enjoy the pier. Oh Issei, come meet my family. They say. Hello, I'm Issei Hayato, pleased to meet you. Sapfrin. Likewise. I'm Sapfrin. Terra. I'm Terra and this is our son Adrian. Adrian is in awe when he saw Issei's wings. Issei indulged his curiosity and let him touch them. Adrian laughed. Issei. That tickles little one. Sapfrin. Would you like to hold him? Issei. I'm not that good with kids they are scared of me. Sorry if I'm being rude. Ren. Adrian isn't scared at all. I sense no fear in him whatsoever. Ren. I feel so much coming from you Issei. Yang. It's okay Issei. He wants you to hold him. Sapfrin lets Issei hold her son. He does so slowly but holds him correctly. Weiss. You have experience looking after kids. Don't you? You knew how to hold him perfectly. Issei. Oh it's not hard to figure out. Yang noticed that his hands are trembling slightly. Issei took a barely nauticable deep breath. Yang looked at the others and only saw Ren have a look of concern, they exchange glances. Dara. So did you come here with John and the others? Issei. Yes I did. Sapfrin. My brother mentioned you, why didn't you join everyone when they came to our place? There's plenty of space. Issei. I had some urgent business to take care of, I was helping Headmaster Osbin, and I didn't want to trouble you. I am a stranger after all. Thera. Well not to us since both teams told us a lot about you. Issei. He good things I hope. Sapfrin. But of course. Adrian later went back to his mother's embrace. Issei felt more relaxed now, both teams noticed how he would glance at the wedding rings they both wear. Later they escort the married couple home, Team RWBY and JNPR are staying there too. Issei was on his way back to the hotel when Yang followed him. Yang. Hey wait up, he stopped and turned towards her. 
They say. Something wrong, Yang. Something is bothering you you want to talk about it, They say. No, Yang. We noticed how you looked at their wedding rings your hands trembled when you held Adrian, They say. Let's get a few things cleared up. I'm not homophobic. I'm only against forced underage marriages and I was worried that I might drop Adrian and hurt him, that's why I was afraid of holding him. Children of all ages are prone to injuries and I'm afraid of causing any. Yang. I never said you were homophobic you looked at those wedding rings with both envy and sorrow. They say. Sigh a bittersweet memory. The and Yang get a message from Ospin in the group chat. Because of the huntsman Tyrion and Hazel killed because of Lionheart, they are low on defense, they need huntsmen to defend the repair crew to set up the recently destroyed communication towers, they will also set up defenses. Other huntsmen are on their way, but it'll take too long. Communication needs to get back up tomorrow afternoon. They say. I'm going back to the hotel. See you guys tomorrow. Yang. Right. Yang. I'll see if Blake can shed some light, they did stay in Menagerie for six months together. Issei flew not to the hotel but to the walls of Argus. The night was still young, he stared at the stars with a cigarette in hand. Issei. Hey Drag. Drag. Yes. Issei. I don't mind turning into a dragon. Drag. Hmm. Issei. Don't divide for a while I'm going to take your advice and let it flow. Drag. Very well. He takes out his scroll and plays music. Issei stops holding his emotions back to some degree, he let it out little by little. His chest ached, he wanted to scream, to shout and let it all out, but he knew that he shouldn't, if he did then an army of Grimm will come to Argus. After calming down he was looking at the dust crystals he had. Greg. Feeling better. Issei. Not really I'm still curious about the dust. Greg. Well I have one concern, your pawn pieces are mutated pieces, they did so because of your willpower and the gear combined, right now they are slightly unstable, so the dust might be affected in unknown ways. Issei. The pawn pieces adapted to our needs, they are crystal based according to Akuja, so maybe these crystals can stabilize them. Greg. You're talking like Azazel now. This sounds risky. Issei. So was taking in the dividing gear. Greg. Touche. Let's try it. Issei transfers the dust into the gear, red, white, yellow, blue and brown lines appear on the gauntlet and go all the way up to his arm. Greg. It's working. Are you in any pain? Issei. It's a tickle compared to the light spears and the dividing gear. Greg. The pawn pieces are stabilizing. Issei. That's good to hear groans. Dot. Suddenly Issei's left arm starts to sting, he deactivates the gear and sees that the scales have changed, they are now made of dust crystals. Most have the elemental properties, but some have none. Greg. Hmm, that's unexpected. Issei picks one of the scales, and also immediately another one took its place. Issei. Okay so now my arm makes dust scales. He threw the white scale and there was a flash of light on impact, it was as bright as a flash grenade. Issei rubbed his eyes. Issei. Okay so since these are dragon scales they have more output than they seem. Greg. Keep this hidden for now. Issei. Right. Issei summoned the gear and managed to hide most of the scales. He found a pharmacy nearby and got some bandage rolls, he covered them up and then went to the hotel where the others stayed. Ozpin. There you are Issei dot dot are you alright? He saw Issei's bloodshot eyes and tear stained face. Issei. Oh nothing, ate something a little too spicy. The heat was so strong that even my eyes felt like they were on fire. Pro. You sure you're okay? Issei. Yes, I'm fine. Drank nearly a gallon of milk to stop the burning, but again I'm okay. Thanks though. Raven. What kind of peppers did you eat? Issei. Not sure, but I never want to eat spicy food again. Maria. Did you eat grim peppers? Issei. Is that what they are called? Well maybe. To me all peppers are the same. So Professor Osbin, about the mission tomorrow. Osbin. There are nearby towers that are damaged because of the Grim, the city has weapons built, but they need to be set up, there are far too few huntsmen, so teams are WBYJNPR, and you are going to help. The rest of us will stay here to guard the lamp and plan our way to Atlas once our job here is done. Issei. Very well. Crow. Care to join us for a nightcap? Osbin. He's too young for that crow. Issei. Sir with all due respect, I'm 20 years old. Raven. You look younger than that. Issei. Likewise. Crow stops drinking his whiskey midway, and Raven isn't sure if she could be flattered at not. Crow. First my niece now my sister. Issei. Relax, you're the only ladies man here. I'm just returning a compliment. Raven. Osbin. Raven the bandit Branwyn is left speechless I've seen a lot in my life, but never expected this. Crow. I'm gonna need a drink. Issei. Gonna drink you under the table again. Crow. Challenge accepted. Crow is passed out, Issei is perfectly fine. Maria. Good heavens kids today are tough. Raven. Not really, just him and a select few. Osbin. True. Raven. 
Speaking of truth, you're actually telling the kids what they are up against. Ah, Aspen. It's time that I did. Once we get to Atlas, I'll tell everyone including all of Remnant. She divided Remnant we united. Raven. About damn time Oz. They say. Everyone go ahead and rest. I'll keep watch and make sure Crow doesn't choke on his tongue. Raven. Smirks alright. Everyone goes to sleep, Issa put Crow on his bed and started to experiment with the empty dust scales on his arm. It took some time but managed to use the empty dust scales as a vessel for two or more elements, he tried to use his other abilities like boost, transfer and divide and incorporate them into the dust. The boost scales are green, divide is bluish white, and transfer scales only work when connected between an empty scale to any other scale. This also works between regular dust crystals, but they copy the properties instead of transferring. I say. Drag this is incredible, Drag. I'll say. You can boost, divide, transfer and elemental attacks without any effort. I say. These don't even have to stay connected to me to use, I think anyone can use them. Drag. What else can we try? I say. What about teleportation? Drag. How do you expect to do that? I say. We infused the previous abilities and elements I did open a portal once. If we can infuse that spell into the scales then it might work. Drag. It'll be difficult but it's possible, they'll be like talismans. I say. I suppose so. Let's do it after we get to Atlas. If this works then we'll need to find a way to control it, otherwise it could open a portal to the dimensional gap. Greg. Imagine if the people of Remnant opened a portal and they see great red-eyed Ibu Ahahaga. I say. Hahahaha I'd pay to see that. The next morning, Raven woke up early and so did Ozpin. Issei gave the lamp to them and went to sleep, he got a couple of hours in and was woken up for the mission, he met up with both teams and spread out. Ruby and Weiss. Ren and John, Issei is on his own. Pura and Nora, Blake and Yang. Yang and Blake had to go to the furthest. They are on her bike and reach their destination, the construction crew is right behind them and start unloading the equipment while Yang and Blake stay on guard, so far it's all clear. Yang. Hey Blake, you and Issei spent half a year together in Menagerie, right? Blake. Yeah. He fit in really well. Yang. Anything interesting happened. Blake. Well there wasn't anything going on between us if that's what you're asking. We did eat his cooking and killed a sea dragon grim together. He also trained the people of the village now we have some pretty decent fighters. Yang. No, I meant like did he talk about why he's so distant and cold at times. Blake. He didn't talk about his past, just said that he has his demons. He would stay by the beach during sleepless nights, smoke and sing a sad song. During the day he would help around the village, train or fly around. Yang. I'm worried about him last night. His hands were trembling when he held Adrian and looked at the wedding rings his mother's wear. He looked at them with envy and sorrow. Blake. I've read a lot of love novels, and I did find a similar scene in one book, in it the protagonist looks at the wedding ring his true love is wearing, but he's not the one married to her. Yang. When we saw the photo in his phone back at Beacon was he in love with one of those girls? Blake. We can't tell for sure, but whatever happened it was bad enough to make him leave. Yang. Should I tell her about his arm? Dot 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 no not yet. Yang. Blake. You like him, don't you? Yang. Yes yes I do but I don't know if he'll like me back. I hinted a few times, but he though I was joking. Blake. Gonna be honest, you do sound like you're just messing around. No one can tell if you're really into someone. You're gonna have to change your approach but you should wait. Yang. How come? Blake. When my parents met him. They asked if we were dating he straight up told them that he's not interested in dating. Yang frowns, but Blake comforts her. Blake. Hey cheer up, it's not the end of the world, there's plenty of time. Just be by his side and he'll notice eventually. She smiled a little. Yang. Alright, thanks Blake you sure there's going in between you and him? Blake. Yang. Yang. I'm just making sure. Blake playfully punched her arm. Yang and Blake looked at each other then at the crew who are far from finished. Suddenly Blake's ears point straight up, her instincts are telling her to run, the atmosphere felt like death is coming. Blake. Evacuate. The crew is on high alert and got in their car, just then a red energy slash comes out of nowhere and it hits them, it hit the car and crushed it, it injured the crew, Yang and Blake run towards them. Two out of four crewmen are dead from shrapnel embedded in their organs, the other two are injured but alive. Yang. Can you two move? Crewman. Groans no we dot watch out. Another energy slash went right by them only an inch away from hitting them. They look towards the direction from where the attack came, they see a red and black figure, two long black horns, white skin, red hair, a red bull skull on its right shoulder, attached with it are red armor plates that go down its arm. It's holding a long red sword, wearing a mask that only shows its right eye which is like Salem's. It has a large black cloth with fur on its waist, held there by red chains. It's humanoid but nothing human about it. Lake and Yang look at it as it starts walking towards them. Lake. What is that? 
Don't recognize me, Blake. Well, I can't really blame you. Their eyes widened. Blake. Adam. Adam. All one touch that you recognized me after what that devil did to me, and you let it happen. He slowly starts to walk towards them. Yang gets in front of Blake and gestured her to back away, she saw keys to the bike in her hand. Yang. Get them out of here and send help, I'll distract him. Blake. I'm not leaving you alone. Yang. Get the two crewmen to safety I got this. Blake looks at Adam, she knows she's no match for him, but Yang does, she grabs the keys and gets the men out, she sits them on the bike, Adam starts to run towards them, but is stopped dead in his tracks by Yang's bullets hitting the ground near his feet, he looks at the ground then at her, she fired off a few more rounds, he blocked half of them using his sword, but dodges the rest. Blake starts the bike and rides off, Adam raised his sword to send another energy slash towards her, but Yang fires off another shot and hits his sword, his aim is off and misses. Blake manages to escape with the two remaining crewmen. Adam. She'll be back, I hope you can entertain me until she comes back. Yang. What the hell are you? Adam. The bringer of your death. He charged towards her, sword raised, Yang noticed that he's twice her size, far more powerful, and isn't sure if she can last long enough for backup. She barely dodged his attack and leapt away. Adam. Last time you charged in without hesitation, now you're running. A coward just like the Belladonna's. Yang. Just goes to show that you know nothing about them. Adam tried to punch her, but she grabbed his arm and tried to bend it backwards, Adam has too much strength and simply tosses her into a tree, her aura flickered, indicating she can't take many hits like that. Adam ran towards her like a bull, and she fired off a round into the ground, the recoil sent her upwards and saved her from being crushed, she grabbed onto a branch as Adam rammed into the free, it destroyed the base and sent it falling to the ground, Yang jumped onto another tree branch, Adam rammed into that tree, and it too fell, Yang again jumped onto another branch, she gave him the middle finger, Adam then jumped up nearly 30 feet and was now face to face with Yang, she activated her semblance, she punched and fired at the same time, Adam punched and both attacks collided, Adam's strength was greater and it overpowered her, her arm felt like she fractured it, both are pushed back, but Yang more so than Adam, she used her other arm to grab onto another branch and stopped herself from falling, Adam nearly lost his balance and both looked at his fist, it was split in half by the bullet. His blood is black. Yang. Shouldn't his aura have prevented that injury? Adam? Not bad. You actually wounded me more than the other huntsmen did. Yang. So you're the one killing them? Adam? No shit. She hears sounds of cracking and looks at his hand, the bullet falls out, and his hand is healed in five seconds. Adam flexes his hand. Adam? Good as new. She's horrified. Yang. What dot dot or dot dot you? Adam? What I should have been from the start. I'm strong enough to kill that devil, I hope you can warm me up before I get to the real fight. He leaps towards her, she can't avoid the strike so crossed her arms in front of her, Adam hits her, and she's sent flying, her left arm is definitely fractured now, and her aura broke, she grabbed another branch and used the leaves for cover. Adam. I know you're here blondie sniff I can smell you. Yang clenched her arm, it's definitely fractured. She kept herself calm and knows she has to keep her distance. Her aura is gone and she's hurt. She takes out her scroll and is sees that there's no signal. She can't call so she has to wait for Blake. Yang. Damn it I hope help comes soon Blake. She suddenly sees a red and black figure through the tiny gaps, it's Adam. She feels like she's prey and he's the predator. She tries to silently move through the foliage, but she's not as stealthy as Blake or Ren. Some rustling here and there and Adam would follow the sounds only to find her scent but not her. Adam. A game of hunter and prey. It's going to be all the more satisfying when I kill you. She ignores him and continues to move in circles, she stays near her assigned location, so they know where to find her, this way her scent is everywhere, and Adam is confused. Adam. Smart move for a blonde, leading me in circles, but I will find you eventually. I always get my prey. Yang stayed quiet as to not give away her location, Adam's attempts failed. He was getting frustrated now. Adam. You're just bucking with me aren't you? Yang. As close as you'll ever get to having sex you insult. Adam raised his sword and sent a horizontal slash that cut through several trees, Yang saw the nearby trees cut cleanly. Yang. That's going to be me if I don't stay clear of it. Another attack cuts more trees near her, and she climbs down one branch at a time, another slash went through the tree she's on just above her head. Yang. I nearly lost my head. Adam. Come out come out wherever you are. Yang sees the trees that split and broke as they hit the ground, it was a massive pileup, she can smell the sap oozing out. She then hides under the fallen freeze and foliage, hoping it would mask her scent, she looks through a tiny gap and sees Adam walk towards her, he truly does look like a monster, she calms her breathing, her heart is beating a mile a minute. Adam stood right where she's hiding, then slowly walks ahead, Yang thinks her plan worked and breaths a sigh of relief, then she hears the sound of wood being split by pure force, she sees his hand that grabbed her head and lifted her out of her spot. 
She struggled to get out of his grip, but he's not budging at all. Adam? Using the smell of tree sap to hide your scent. Clever, but I never said that it's your natural scent I was following. I used the stench of your fear. Long deep sniff it lead me right to you. Yang. Let go you monster. She fires from her gauntlets, and the recoil from her left one is really painful because of her fractured arm. Each shot pierces his body, and he's wounded, but he's not phased by it. The bullets fall out and his wounds heal. The right gauntlet is out of ammo, and her left one has one round left, she aims for his head, but he grabbed her wrist and crushed her gauntlet, he slammed her into the ground and knocked the wind out of her, she's gasping for air, and after a labored attempt she breaths again. Her head is fuzzy and vision blurry, Adam then broke her left arm. Yang. A-A-H-H-H. Adam. I love it when humans scream more, he then stabbed her broken arm. Yang. I I uh. Her scream echoes throughout the area. Adam. Yes that's good. Yang. Please. Sniff stop. Adam dot 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 why. I want to make sure your devil friend sees my handiwork. I will do to him what he did to me. Hm. He then looks at Yang and her body. He pins her to the ground and holds both of her arms in his hand. Yang. What what are you doing? Adam. What Salem is doing to Cinder. Let's see what the results will be since I'm only part grim. He then starts touching her. Yang. Hey hands off. She kicks his hand away and struggles knowing it's futile. Adam. Still a fighter. I hope our offspring inherit that. He then starts to touch her, she's starting to panic and hyperventilate, her blood pressure is increasing and is about to pass out. Yang. Someone please who hurry. Just before passing out she sees a white projectile hit Adam's eye, and he's blinded by a white flash, Yang had closed her eyes most of the way, but is still able to see, someone then punched his head clean off of his shoulders, she then saw a figure wearing red armor, wings and a tail. That figure grabbed a leg, lifted the heavy corpse like it's nothing and slammed it into the ground repeatedly, the ground is now jet black, the red figure walked towards the head and grabbed it along with a branch, he stuck it into the ground and impaled the head on top of it. She sees the figure light the head on fire. Yang. Who or what is that? She sees a portal open and Raven comes out of it. Raven? Yang. She lifts her up and the red figure flies away. Raven? It's okay now, I'm here. Yang? Mom? Raven? That's right. She takes Yang through the portal and she looks back at the armored figure and saw its arms. They look like a Say's gauntlet on each arm. Yang passes out. A few hours later she wakes up in a hospital bed, looks around, and everyone in Team RWBY and JNPR are hurt with minor injuries except for her. She's hooked up to an IV with morphine added into it. Lake. Yang, are you in any pain? Yang. No I'm okay what happened? John. We were attacked by some old acquaintances, but we'll be fine. Ren. It was Cardin and his old team but. Different. Pura. Each of our teams found one member of theirs, they nearly took us down. Yang. Glad you guys are okay wait dot dot where's it say? Weiss. He's on the job, getting the towers and defenses set up. They're halfway done. Yang. Oh okay dot dot how did they manage to take us down? John. They weren't human anymore. Nora. They looked like they were. Yang. Part Grimya. Ruby. Wait something doesn't make sense. CRDL has four members and there were five teams. Who attacked you Yang? Yang. Blake. It was Adam Taurus. Weiss. But we was crippled. There's no way he could have. Yang. He turned into a grim. A real monster. Blake. Yang I'm sorry that I left you to fight him all alone sniff dot. Yang. I told you to take my bike and get the two injured crewmen to safety. Don't blame yourself when it worked out, Blake. But it didn't, Yang. What do you mean, Weiss? Yang your arm was too heavily damaged nerves were severed, Yang. What? She looks at her arm, heavy cast and she can hardly feel it. She can barely move her fingers, Yang. No 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 I can't be a huntress now, Ruby. Sure you can, Maria told us that Atlas has the tech to fix your arm, she gets her optics checked there every couple of years, Yang. Oh okay good thanks for telling me. What happened to them? Our attackers I mean. Ren. Ruby's training with Maria helped her control her powers and she helped stop them one by one, but since our part human, they didn't stay petrified for more than a few seconds. Weiss. Even my balance breaker barely matched one of them, Pura and John, we're having a tough time since they fought Cardin. Pura. He was relentless. John. I then killed him the rest of them were taken out by a say. Yang. John what happened? John. Sai he attacks us like a mindless beast, but a beast nonetheless, any injuries he sustained healed even faster than my semblance can heal injuries. I looked in his eyes and saw the pain, he didn't want this I noticed that he didn't have aura, so I used my semblance on him it worked his body rejected his grim side, and it evaporated and because of that he was missing half of his body dot dot he bled out, but whispered his last words. Weiss. What did he say? John. He said I'm sorry please stop her. Then he died. Yang. He was referring to Salem. 
She's behind this. Weiss. Makes sense. She did give Cinder that new arm and eye. Gang started to shake a bit, flashbacks of Adam hurting her, toying with her, nearly violating her. The image of that monster saying things like using her for crossbreeding experiments terrified her. She's rather die by the claws or venom from a grim than be its breeding tool. Lake. Yang why are you shaking? She snapped out of it. Yang. Adam said something that scares me. Lake. Like what? Yang. He said that Salem is using Cinder as a breeding tool for Grimm. The others widened their eyes. Hurra. That's not possible. Grimm and human DNA is incompatible. Yang. And yet we fraud human and Grimm hybrids, I know they were human and Frauna's first, but if she can turn them into Grimm, then what's stopping her from doing what Adam said? Ren. Yang there's more isn't there? She nodded. Ruby. What else did he say? Yang. It's what he nearly did. Hurra. Such as. Yang. He wanted to test Salem's theory by using me. Sniff dot. Lake's ears went up, her pupils shrank, Pura was releasing small flames with every breath, Ruby's eyes glowed, Weiss nearly used balance breaker, John's aura was radiating, Ren shows pure rage, and Nora clenches her fist so hard that they bleed. Nora. Where is that son of a bitch? Yang. Dead I think. They all calmed down but not by much. Lake. You managed to kill him. Yang. I wish it was someone wearing full body armor with wings and a tail I saw him or her punch Adam's head right off his shoulders, then tore him apart. Then I saw my mom appear I'm not sure though it was all so blurry dot dot I passed out after that. Raven enters the room. Raven. It was all real how are you feeling? Yang. I'm doing alright my arm is messed up though. Raven. You'll heal. There was an awkward silence. Ren. Guys why don't we go outside? Let's not waste a nice day moping around. They read the room and left the mother and daughter alone. As soon as the door closed, Raven sat on Yang's bed and hugged her. Yang. Mom. Raven. Let it out. Yang. What? Raven. You're strong Yang, I'm proud of you, but you went through a lot don't hold back. Let it out. Yang started to cry little by little, and then completely broke down. Raven didn't let go of her for one second. Raven. I'm sorry I wasn't there sooner. Sniff I'm sorry you'll be okay. Mommy's here and she's not leaving. Yang continues to cry and she didn't let go of her mother. The others could hear her cries, Ruby turned around, but John stopped her. Ruby. John let me go she needs me. John. Right now she needs her mother. I know you're there for her, and she knows that, but a parent's love is comforting on a different level and to those among us who lost your parents, I'm sorry if I brought back some bad memories. Please know that it is not my intention to do so. Ren. We understand, some of us lost our parents, but those who still have them should spend as much time as they can. Nora. I agree. Ruby. You're right. Let's go and see if Issei needs our help. They leave. After a while Yang calms down. Yang. Mom do you know who wore that red armor? Raven. I'm not sure, he or she was already there when I found you, but that person saved you and I'm grateful. Yang. Where are Uncle Crow, Ozpin and Maria? Raven. Crow is with your friend Issei. Ozpin is talking to Ironwood and getting transport for Atlas. We leave after a day or two. Yang. Okay sounds good. Skip to Issei and Crow. Issei is helping with the heavy lifting, while Crow is the lookout. It's all clear. After a short time another tower is done, and guns are loaded with plenty of ammo, along with proximity sensors. Crow. How are you lifting all that weight all day after fighting? Issei. Like I said, I'm just built different. Crow. You're a real mystery kid. Issei. Yup. When they are packing things up the others show up. Ruby. Hey guys, we came to help. Crow. Already finished your pedal. Ruby. That was quick, Crewman. Your friend helped speed up the process. They look at Issei who came over. Issei. How are you guys feeling? John. We'll be fine. You helped us in the fight. Issei. No problem. We're all done, mission complete how's Yang? Ruby. Her arm is pretty banged up, she'll need Atlas tech to heal it. John. And my aura couldn't do anything. Hura. You tried. Nora. Issei where did you go after we won our fight? Issei. I went looking for Yang and Blake, the rest of us were close by and served as each other's backup, those two were the furthest with no way to communicate. I looked everywhere and found Raven taking Yang with her through the portal. I didn't see her biker Blake, but I did find two out of the four crew members they were dead. Then I saw someone's or something's head on a branch being used as a pike it was also on fire. Weiss. Well. That got dark. Blake. Issei can you take me there? I want to see it for myself. Issei. It's a pretty grim sight. A nearby cricket chirps. No one is amused. Blake. Just take me there. Issei. Alright alright. Fine. Grab on. She held his arm and he flew her there, after a few minutes they reached the destination. Blake sees the smashed corpse that slowly turned into bones, the head is now a smoking skull. Blake. 
He really is dead good riddance. She spits right into the eye socket. I say. Nice aim. Blake. Thank you. She then takes a picture. Blake. Hello new wallpaper. I say. Okay. Blake. You know Yang said he tried to rape her. Blake wasn't looking at him and didn't see his eyes glow green from anger. I say. Come again. Blake. He tried to use her as a breeding tool just like how Salem is using Cinder. Issei may not care for Cinder, but if she's being used like that he's planning on getting revenge should he get the chance. Issei. Whoever killed him has our gratitude and about Cinder. I don't know how I should feel about that she did attack the academy, tried to kill John, Pura, Osbin, me and the rest of us at Haven, a lot of mixed feelings, do we even know where Salem is? Blake. No. We should get going. Both of them then fly away. Among the piles of destroyed foliage Emerald emerged with her scroll, she's horrified at just how easily Adam was killed by a red armored figure. The other four not so easily but eventually killed by RWBY, JNPR and SA. She takes a photo of Adam's head on the branch and his decomposing corpse. She sends it to Arthur who is enraged at his failure. Salem. Problem Arthur. Watts. Sigh forgive me your grace but we failed. Some unknown person completely destroyed Adam like he was nothing. Salem. What? He shows her the video and image Emerald sent. She too is enraged. Salem. Six months of effort down the drain sigh well let's see how our breeding tool is doing. They go to check on Cinder who is just laying there on the ground, well covered in a blanket of ooze, which is all died up now, her stomach is distended, either from the ooze or Salem's experiment worked, only time will tell. Salem snapped her fingers, and the breeder grim disbanded. Salem places her hand on Cinder's abdomen, and Cinder flinched at her eyes could touch. Salem. Hum it's too early to tell. Another day or two and we'll know for sure. You can stay here and think about what you've done. Watts, any clue who the person wearing that red armor is? Watts. This is the first time I'm seeing such a thing, this person one punched Adam's head clean off, used one arm to lift and slam the body into oblivion, then set his head on fire, while mounting it on a branch being used as a pike. This person is sending us a message. Salem. A challenger. First the devil of beacon now this individual. Let me know if you can find anything. Watts. Yes your grace. She and Arthur leave, Cinder slowly gets up, the dried ooze breaks off of her skin, and she slowly gets up, more wet ooze flows out of her. She stood in front of the mirror. She didn't like what she saw and slammed her arm on the mirror. Cinder. Why why did it turn out like this? All I wanted was to be powerful, so no one would dare hurt me again yet here I am getting raped by Grimm now I don't know if I have a monster growing inside of me, I've been violated in every way for who knows how long why do I serve her. She just used me like those before her I need to get out of here. She ripped off her grim arm and I, it was painful but necessary. She wiped off the remaining ooze on her body and removed as much as she could from inside of her. She covered herself with her shredded clothes and left the room, she sneaked her way through the empty halls and was about to turn into the corner when she saw a hulking shadow coming towards her. She has nowhere to go and though she was either going to get caught by him or by Salem when she finds Hazel dead from severe burns. She's about to find out what's going to happen, just as Hazel turned, he closed his eyes, starts yawning and covers his mouth with his hand, Cinder took the chance and passed right by him. Hazel. Huh. He looked around and saw nothing. Hazel. Must have been just my imagination. He continues walking. Cinder makes it to her room, changes her clothes and then escapes Salem's castle. She flies straight to Mistral and wondering what she should do, should she switch sides. What about Emerald, Mercury and Hazel? Well she can worry about them later. But to say, it's getting dark, everyone gathered together, and they show the picture of Adam's head impaled. For some it's pretty morbid, but Yang found comfort in it. Yang. We still don't know who it was that ended his life. Crow. Nope. Whoever it was is probably a good person, he or she did save you and took him out for good. You're safe now firecracker. Osbin. I'm sorry Miss Xiaolong, I shouldn't have sent you and Miss Belladonna alone, you two were isolated, with no way of telling us about the danger you faced, now you're hurt. I'm sorry. Raven. You should be. Yang. Mom. Osbin. But she's right. You got hurt because I ordered you two to go guard the crew on your own two of them are dead Sigh. I've personally requested General Ironwood to help in healing your arm. No matter what it takes. Raven. You're starting to tell the truth and taking responsibility. What changed Osbin? The next day everyone was out in Argus, RWBY, JNPR and SA are visiting John's sister again, they were worried about Yang when they saw her arm in cast, but they all said that it's all part of the job, SA was happy that he came as he was told about John's past. He started recording. No one has any idea on how Coco and Velvet appeared out of nowhere at his worst moment and only to disappear into thin air, the last image pushed Pura into horny overload. Pura. Oh, John. She was dragging him by his feet, Nora and Ren are terrified of her, John's nails are scratching the floor and tearing the carpet. Sapphron. Don't tear up the carpet, Tara. 
Not that one at least. Everyone, gang. Vomit Boy is becoming a man, sniff I'm so proud of him, the say plays two songs, Adrian had a light up toy in his hand, he raised it and moved it slowly left and right. Bran was busy covering Adrian's ears while Nora styled his hair, now he knows some semblance of torture John endured, Adrian was confused to no end, his uncle was being dragged away, Issei was laughing like a crack addict on helium, his mothers are flirting, Team RWBY is madly blushing and laughing. After a good while John and Pura come down, both of their hair is messy, their faces still red and clothes wrinkled. They all give them a smirk, the guys sat in one spot in a different room while the girls in the other. The guys fist bump while the girls hound Pura with questions. Sapfrin. I hope my little brother wasn't too rough. Pura. Actually I was the rough one. Ruby. Poor John. Ha. Pura. Ha. No, he took charge. Hera. Definitely an arc. She nudges her wife. Issei lit a victory cigarette for John. Ren. Your family is quite open. John. That they are, no matter how embarrassing it is. Issei. So how was your first time? John. Amazing. Ren. You are now a man. John. When will you and Nora want to become man and woman? Pura and I will give you some tips so you can give her yours. Issei. Shots fired ha ha ha. Vomit boy spitting fire. Adrian is lucky to have you as his uncle John. John. Thanks man. A fist bump. Ren. Sleep with one eye open. Both of you. Later they spend the day together as a group, Adrian wanted to fly with Issei, so John's sisters gave Issei a front baby carrier, the type that is attached to the body, he puts it on, Adrian is fastened in tightly, Issei puts his arms around him just in case, he's taking no risks and slowly lifts off, he flew low and slow, Adrian is having the time of his young life, he eventually fell asleep and Issei landed gently, they tucked Adrian in, Issei returns the baby carrier. Tara. You're pretty good with kids. You don't have to be so afraid. Issei. Thank you. Kids are young and fragile, I'm just afraid of seeing them get hurt. Sapfrin. We know the feeling, we're constantly looking out for him. Issei. Being a parent must be tough. Tara. It is but when it's what you want and you do it right it's worth it. Issei. John and Pura are gonna need to know that one day. John and Pura heard that and lots of scenarios go through their heads. Tara notices the bandages on his arm. Tara. Your arm. This caught everyone's attention. Issei. Oh this is nothing, just a minor scrape during our mission today. Speaking of which, we are going to Atlas tomorrow morning. Sapfrin. Already. John. Afraid so, there are some projects that the headmaster and general need help with. Tara. What kind? John. Well it's kind of complicated. Sapfrin. Simplify it. John. Okay okay, they select one student who studied at both academies for the ace ops candidate, and that student recommends other students from either academies, and so here we are. That's why we're not in Beacon. Sapfrin. Why not just say it. John. I didn't want to come off as arrogant. Tara. Well knowing you, you definitely would hesitate in saying anything like that. Sapfrin. Still modest. She pinched his cheeks. Issei. Well I'm going back to the hotel, see you guys in the morning. Everyone. Good night Issei. He flies straight to the hotel and stays up guarding the lamp. The next morning they are all gathered, said farewell to John's family, and got in the bullhead that will take them straight to Atlas, just before taking off, sirens are heard and the shield on the shore are activated, a large sea grim comes out of the ocean. Then they see a giant robot with a cannon for an arm walk towards the grim. Issei and Ruby get off the bullhead and fly towards it. She uses her silver eyes to petrify it, and Issei fires a dragon shot. Just like that the grim is dead and they go back to the bullhead, everyone including the pilots look at them. Ruby and Issei. What? Maria. Well done you two. Then they hear a woman on the radio in the cockpit. Hum and who were those two? They are currently in your bullhead. Islet. They are just huntsmen on their way to Atlas ma'am. Maria. Cardivan is that you? Cardivan. Maria. You're banned from flying. Maria. You banned me because I just ate some roasted nuts during a flight once. The two started bickering, Ozpin gestured the pilots to take off, and they cut the chatter, they are now on their way to Atlas. Share. Part 12. Atlas. On the airship that's taking everyone to Atlas, Maria is still teaching Ruby on how she can focus her powers, Ruby immediately thinks of laser beams and got whacked on the head by a cane. The Branwing twins are just chilling. Lake is constantly typing something on her scroll with a red face and a tissue up her nose, she kept looking at John and Pura, then typing on her scroll, her fingers are barely visible because of how fast she's typing. Issei let out a small chuckle. Raven. What's got you giggling? Issei. Your name and a nevermore remind me of a poem and a song. Crow. The hell. Issei. Listen to these. He takes out his scroll and plays two videos. Ozpin. Lovely. Raven. Never saw that coming. Crow. It's like that song is inspired by you. Wow it's so accurate. That scorpion sting part reminds me of that bastard Tyrion. 
Raven. I'm gonna kill whomever wrote those lyrics. Issei. Good luck with that haha sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. It was inspired by the poem, the fact that the lyrics describe you is purely coincidental. Raven. It doesn't describe me cause I don't sing. Crow. Nice comeback. Haha. <laughs> hey kid, send that song and poem, Ima send it to Ty. Raven. Don't you dare he's gonna start imagining if I can sing. Ruby. Speaking of which, hey Issei, Blake said you can sing. Issei. A little bit. Why? Ruby. Want to sing a song to pass the time? John. I got some recordings of some music. Issei. Sai sure, got nothing better to do. Crow. In flight entertainment. Cool. Weiss. Which one you got in mind? Ruby. This one. Issei shared that with us in the group a while back. Issei. Cool. You remember the lyrics. Ruby. Yes I do. Raven. Is it a sad one? Issei. Yes. Ozpin. Don't let it break your heart. Issei dot 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 already broken. Ren. That's deep. Dawn plays the music and the two start singing. Yang though about Issei when Ruby sang her part, she had a sad smile and never looked away from him, Issei didn't smile at all his eyes were closed tightly, he was thinking about those back home every second he was singing, he stopped singing after two thirds of the song, but Ruby finished it. After the song he sat down and let out a deep sigh. Divide. Yang. Why did you stop near the end? He couldn't tell her what was going through his mind, so he redirects the focus elsewhere. Issei. Sorry I'm just tired I stay up at night on guard in case someone tries to attack us again. Osbin. Issei you've been doing that for several nights and get very little sleep during the day. We have some time till we get to Atlas, get some rest. Issei nodded and sat in the corner, covered himself with his wings, leans on the side of the airship, and immediately fell asleep. Crow. He passed out. Raven. Osbin, who is he really? Osbin. He never talked about his past that much, just said that he needs a fresh start, I met him outside of Beacon a few days before the academy welcoming the first years. He joined and is a good friend and ally. He's the one that convinced James on how to aid the Faunus and Atlas, gave him ideas on how to use dust more efficiently, fix their image etc. Raven. Grim shit you're hiding information again. Osbin. I am not. I know just as much about him as anyone here. You can ask James yourself. Yang. Drag. Drag. Yes Yang. Raven. What the? Maria. Is his gauntlet talking? Crow. Oh good, I thought I was imagining it. Ozpin. You really need to stop drinking alcohol. Crow. I'll quit drinking alcohol when you quit drinking coffee. Ozpin. Looks like we can kiss our liver and kidneys goodbye. Yang. Guys enough Drake please tell us who you and Issei really are. Drake. Sigh we are partners who are your allies. Pura. Drake who is Rias? Drake. Where did you hear that name? Pura. He accidentally called me Rhea's back in Beacon once. Ruby. Is she the red head in the photo he keeps in his phone? Greg. Dot dot yes she is one of twelve who betrayed him simultaneously. You look a lot like her Pura. John. But she's not the one who hurt him. Greg. He knows that but a lot of you share a resemblance to those who hurt him he's reminded of them every time but notices the differences as well. Maria. Poor boy. Ren. Greg, will we ever meet you in person? Greg. I'm afraid that will be difficult. I am where I suffer a fate that is my own doing, I would not wish this upon anyone, but I was lucky, Issei is a great partner, and we work well together. We're like two soul in one body. Like him, I too require rest. Let us know when we get to Atlas. But that said, he stayed silent as he too needed to sleep. The others called out for Drake but received only silence. Yang walked over to Issei, she moved his hair backwards. Everyone looks at her, they can she likes him, and Blake is getting more ideas for her stories. Raven smirked seeing her daughter become infatuated with Issei, Yang sees the cut on his face is almost healed and a slight stubble growing. Yang. The cut on his face is almost healed. Raven. The one he got during our battle. Nora. It's been over a week since that happened, why didn't it heal sooner? Yang. He told me his aura is different. Yang wanted to ask Ozpin if she could use the lamp and ask who Issei and Dragar, but ultimately choose to stay quiet. They have a mission. After several hours later they see the floating city of Atlas and the city of Mantle below it. Blake woke Issei up and he looked a lot more refreshed. He stretched and looked out the window. Issei. Wow that's pretty cool. Weiss. It's gotten better since General Ironwood helped not only Atlas, but Mantle too. Faunas are treated equally here, any racists are punished. Blake. How so? Weiss. Either they learn to see them as their equals and apologize or be drafted into the military and fight Centipede Grimm in the unstable dust mines. Crow. For once he's doing something I agree with. Cheers Jimmy. He takes a sip from his flask and then puts it away. Ruby. You've been drinking less and less. Crow. Yeah well I think it's about time. Raven. After Issei destroyed your pride. Crow. 
On your new name is Canary cause you're singing like one. Raven. I will cut you. They say. As entertaining as this is, I just woke up and don't need to hear you two squawking. Yang. I want to write a pun book with you. They say. It'll be a real page turner. Yang. I'm getting moist. Blake. One more pun and I'll kill you both, I don't care how powerful you both are. They say. After knowing how strong we are, you really think you can. Osbin. Ooh, Bren. Snap. Nora. Eight out of nine lives remaining. The pilots overhead their conversation and are having trouble controlling not just the aircraft, but their laughter too. Blake. Sigh I'm gonna crash this airship with all of us in it. They say with a Satama face. Okay. Her eyes twitched and was about lunge at him, but Nora held her back. They say. I'll make you some sushi if you chill. Blake dot 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 deal. She relaxes and Nora lets go. They reach Atlas and land on the platform. As soon as the doors open they are greeted by Winter with a smile on her face. A real smile. Why sleeps out of the airship and into her sister's arms. They hug and they feel so happy. Winter. Welcome back. Weiss. Good to be back sis. How are mom and Whitley doing? Winter. They're doing great. These must be your friends and teammates I saw after the attack on Beacon. They stepped out and Winter was annoyed when she saw Crow, but as soon as Raven stepped out, she took out her sword and Raven seeing her hostility did the same. Weiss. Winter she's helping us she's on our side. Winter. She's abandoned. Osbin. Miss Schnee I can vouch for her, all of us can, she helped us take down some of those who attacked Beacon. Winter lowers her sword. Raven. And I'm sorry for kidnapping Weiss. Winter was in front of her almost instantly, their swords strike each other. Winter. Confessing your crime before your death, how Nobel for abandoned. Crow pulled his sister away, and Weiss pulled hers away. Weiss. It's okay Winter she apologized and more than made up for the trouble. Crow. Yeah Ice Queen, she's been helping us that felt weird to say. Raven smacked him on his head. Maria, Ruby, Blake, Yang, JNPR and Issei introduce themselves. Winter. Pleased to meet you all, I'm Winter Schnee. Follow me, the general is waiting. He wanted to greet you personally, but he has little to no free time nowadays. Osbin. I know the feeling. Issei. Don't you spend half your time walking around the academy and drinking coffee. Poor Professor Goodwitch. Raven. Ha ha ha. Osbin. Ouch. They head straight to Ironwood's office in Atlas Academy, Weiss was welcomed back by her fellow students on the way there. They enter his office and Ironwood is talking on the phone. Ironwood. Done already doctor. Perfect. I'm sure Mantle will be happy alright doctor, take care and thank you for everything, if there's anything you need then don't hesitate to ask. Then call. He then sees everyone including Raven. He didn't expect that. Ironwood. Welcome to Atlas. Sorry I couldn't you welcome you personally, we've been busy. Osbin. We can tell. How's everything James? Ironwood. Splendid. The faunas have equal rights, there's justice being served both ways. If any faunas act out against humans without any provocation get punished as well, same for humans. This way everyone is equal and understand one another. The people of Mantle and Atlas are free to see both cities, there have been a few fights between the high class versus the middle and lower class. Sigh dot dot. I could use some help on that. Keeping the peace is not easy, but it's possible, and it's all thanks to the Schnee family and Issei Hayato. They all look at the two. Weiss. Don't look at me. I couldn't do anything. Ironwood. Think again. You changed how the people see the Schnee family, from selfish and arrogant to protective and considerate and then some. Agent Winter here is very proud. Winter. He's right. She smiles. Crow. Oh my goodness she smiles now I know I need to quit drinking. Winter. Sir permission to kill him. Ironwood. No. He's a friend Winter, we also work together. Crow. That reminds me, we need to discuss some things in private. Winter. Like the relics and the maidens. Crow. Well secrecy just went out the window and dropped all the way to mantle. Ironwood. The pot calling the kettle black crow, you still haven't explained why Raven is here. Raven snaps her fingers and there's a gust of wind in the room. Ironwood. Oh she's the spring maiden. Okay then. That explains how you got the lamp. If I may ask, who is the lady accompanying you? Maria. I'm Maria Calavera. Ironwood. It's an honor to meet the legendary Grim Reaper. Crow. I know the feeling. They say. So should we get the staff next? Ironwood. In time, as you already know, she's ill and bedridden, we don't know how much time she has. They say. I see. Ironwood. So I say, I think it's time for you to hold up your end of the deal. Ruby. What deal? They say. That I help in sharing what I know about dust that includes amplifying the output, we're going to experiment on keeping it stable. This way Remnant can benefit from it. They have the tech for it. I can also train with the students here. Ironwood. That wasn't part of the deal, but the more the merrier. Ironwood. 
That remind me, Miss Xiaolong, please follow Agent Winter to the medical bay, let's see if we can patch up that arm of yours, we're also getting you another gauntlet. The rest of you are free to explore Atlas while Osbin, Crow, Raven and I catch up, when you're done, join us so we can plan ahead. RWBY, Winter and JNPR. Yes General. Yang follows Winter to the medical bay, Issei, and the others follow them. Yang is getting her arm checked by the best doctors in Atlas. Her bones are being set properly and once that's done, John used his semblance to speed up her healing. Issei decided to go for a walk, he feels someone approach him from behind and turns around with his grip on Ascalon. He sees Winter standing there. Winter. Good instincts but I'm not here to fight. You must be Issei, the devil of Beacon. Issei. That's just a label. How can I help you Agent Shni? Winter. Just Winter is fine. Issei. As you wish, what can I help you with? Winter. You've done so much already, I wanted to thank you for the changes you brought and for helping Weiss. Issei. I didn't really do anything, Weiss got stronger with her team and friends by her side and it was the general who brought about the changes. I simply convinced him to do so by showing him the pros and cons. Winter. Still, thank you. How did you convince him to do all this? Issei. The pros and cons. Winter. But not just the pros and cons of aiding Vale, the faunas and dust. Issei. Correct, all of that is the metaphorical cake. Winter. What's the icing? Issei. We have yet to pick one. Winter. I see. Issei. Sorry to hear about your father. Winter. Don't be. He got what was coming to him. Issei. Winter who is the candidate for the Winter Maiden? Winter. Issei. It's you isn't it? You fit the criteria. Young, skilled, strong, strategic, and you have your priorities straight. Winter. Thank you but how did you figure it out? Issei. Pura is our half-maiden for those reasons and others. I transferred her powers from the previous maiden. Winter. How did you do that? Issei. My semblance allows me to amplify my powers and those of whom I choose. I can even transfer my power after increasing it, by chance it can transfer the maiden powers. Winter. At what cost? Issei. None. Winter. What? Dot dot so the previous maiden isn't dead. Issei. Ha ha no, Amber is back at Beacon protecting it as it protected her. John healed her using his semblance. Winter. I've seen what you can do and you can do a lot more than anyone. Do you have multiple semblances? Issei. No, just one multi-purpose semblance. With practice a semblance can evolve. Look at your family's semblance. Summoning, time dilation, gravity glyphs etc. Weiss became one with her semblance. Winter. I am aware. She defeated an Aesop. Issei. Yes she's in a league of her own winter please lead me to the maiden I need her permission to transfer the powers to you, it doesn't feel right otherwise. Winter. I understand. Follow me. They go to the special medical bay where the elderly winter maiden lies awake. Winter. Freya. Freya. Hello winter, I see you brought a friend. Issei. Pleasure to meet you ma'am, my name is Issei Hayato. Freya. Likewise, how can I help you? Issei. Actually I'm the one who is here to help you. Freya. How so? Issei. I can safely transfer your powers to whomever you choose without any risk to you using my semblance. You can be free of this burden and feel free to do as you see fit with your freedom. She didn't expect this. Freya. I dot can. Winter. He has done this before for Amber, she's alive and well, she's protecting Beacon currently. Freya. Sounds nice to be free, but I have nowhere to go. Winter. You can stay with my family. We have more than enough space. Freya. Winter you have looked after me for months, I can't let you bear this burden any longer. Winter. It was never a burden to begin with I was assigned to look after you, but I would have done it regardless. Freya was happy to hear it, Winter saw her as her own grandmother by bond, and Freya sees Winter as a granddaughter. Issei. So what do you say? Freya. Do it. He grabs their hands and feels the power within. Transfer. The blue energy transfers from Freya to Winter. Winter feels a chill go through her and become one with her. Winter. It worked. Freya. And I'm still alive you weren't kidding about the no risk Issei. Issei. How do you feel? Freya. Old. Winter and Issei look at each other, they don't know if she's joking or hates being old. Freya. Bad joke. Issei. Honestly it was good, but it felt like it would be rude if we laughed. Greg. Awkward. Freya. He you're both good kids, thank you for being honest, in hindsight I should have known that the joke would be awkward. Winter. Let's get you out of here but what will I tell the general? Issei. The truth, you got the power to protect Atlas and Miss Freya is going to stay with your family. He has no reason to object to that. Winter. Alright. We'll be back Freya. Freya. Take your time. Issei and Winter leave, Ironwood, Raven, Crow and Ospin are talking, and they hear a knock on the door. Ironwood. Come in. The two enter. Winter. Sir I have some news. Ironwood. Yes. Winter. 
I have the power of the Winter Maiden. She creates starts to levitate. Ironwood. Congratulations we should hold a proper funeral for Freya. Winter. Sir she's very much alive. Ironwood. But the powers can only be transferred after the death of the current Maiden. They say. She has excellent control sir, she willed it to her. Her decades of experience and mastery over her powers. Winter. Why did you just lie to him? Ironwood. That's great news. I'm honestly happy to hear that. Winter. Sir I have a request. Ironwood. Name it. Winter. We agreed that she can stay with my family. She's no longer the maiden and thus not a target she and I have grown quite close. Ironwood. Request granted. I'll arrange transport and keep a medical team stationed nearby. Winter. Thank you sir. Raven. How's Yang? Issei. Still getting patched up. Broken bones can be set but severed nerves take time. Raven. Crow. She'll be okay. You go ahead and check on her. The meeting is finished anyway. Raven. Alright. She leaves and goes to check on her daughter. Issei. So where's the Reaper? Ozpin. She's visiting a friend to get her eyes checked and let's get you two up to speed. We haven't decided on what kind of question we want to ask the Lamp, General knows about Lionheart's betrayal, Salem's grim experiments that attacked us in Argus, she's becoming more and more dangerous. Pro. Which is why we have to plan in greater detail. Issei. What do you have in mind? Ironwood. We train harder, prepare for every possible scenario, create alliances with every kingdom, and then we inform them of her existence, first we find her. Issei. Hasn't all of Remnant already been mapped out? Ozpin. Yes, but her location is still unknown. Issei then looks at the map of Remnant on the wall and realized something. Issei. Why doesn't this continent have a name? They looked at each other. Crow. Well settlers said there's nothing there. Issei. That's what they said, but they don't have technology we do. Has it been mapped? Ironwood. I'm afraid not. Issei deadpanned and looked at them like they are idiots. Winter. Why are you looking at us like that? Issei. Immortal witch. Dot, 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 hiding for centuries. Dot, 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 a never ending grim army unmapped landmass work with me here. They look at each other and face palmed. Ironwood. Sigh I'm I'm going to send a few drones. Ozpin. With bombs. Crow. Lots of them. Issei. Yeah you do that. Winter. I'm going to go check on Freya. Issei. I'm gonna tell Raven and the others. They all go their separate ways, Raven, RWBY and JNPR groaned at the sheer stupidity. Raven's eye twitched but is happy that her forces are going to be decimated for a while. Winter was taking Freya to an airship and they see RWBY and JNPR are walking past them until Winter stops Weiss. Winter. Everyone I would like you all to meet someone, this is Freya, the previous Winter Maiden. Freya, this is Weiss my little sister and these are her friends and teammates from Beacon. Weiss. It's an honor to meet you ma'am. She bows respectfully. Freya. Likewise. Winter. Weiss she's going to be staying with us from now on. Weiss. Sounds great. They all introduce themselves, but Freya looks at Nora like she's familiar. Freya. Nora dot 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 is that really you? Nora. Have we met before? Freya. Yes when you were born. Nora. What? Freya. I know you're confused, but my full name is Freya Valkyrie. Everyone's eyes widen. They start to see the resemblance as well. Nora's hands shake. Ren wants to help her, but Issei stops him. Play the song above, Freya. That's right, I'm your gran. Nora immediately gets down to her level cause she's in a wheelchair and hugs her, Freya hugs back, and Nora starts to tear up. Nora. I've dot dot been wanting to meet my family for so long now sniff you know. Freya. You look just like your mother there's no doubt now. You're her little girl and my granddaughter. This is the first time anyone ever saw Nora cry other than Ren. They backed away a bit and let them have their moment. Weiss. Wholesome. Ruby wiped a tear away. Winter. Yes she's family to me. Weiss. I hope mom and Whitley get along with her I haven't visited since I got here months ago I should go see them. Winter. Come with us. It's time our house feels like a home. Weiss, Winter, Freya and Nora go to the Schnee house. Nora gets to know her grandmother. Freya is happy to see Nora so happy and full of enough energy to power half of Mantle. Winter flies them to a different location. Weiss. Winter this isn't the way home. Winter. Yes it is. Weiss trusts her sister with her life so didn't question her. They get to their destination and see a large house. They land and enter the house. Weiss's jaw dropped. This felt like a real home. Winter. We downgraded. Weiss. No this is an upgrade. Did mom do this? What happened to the old place? Winter. Yes she did, after father was exposed and arrested, mother felt free, instead of tearing down the manor, she converted it into a hospital for all SDC employees. Whitley. Winter is that you? Her little brother's voice comes from another room. Winter. We have some family who'll be living here from now on. He pops out and sees Weiss, Nora and Freya. Whitley. 
Hey Weiss, welcome back and we have guests. Weiss. Not guests family. Whitley. In that case, welcome home everyone. I'm Whitley. Nora. I'm Nora and this is my grandmother. Whitley. I'm Whitley, dinner is almost ready. Just follow me. He walks over to Freya and pushes her wheelchair to the dining room. Nora walked right next to him. Weiss. Who is he and what has he done with our little brother? Winter. Chuckles yeah I know how you feel, but that's Whitley, after the old man was arrested, he wasn't treated like a soulless machine by him, mother stopped drinking and became dot dot well dot dot our mom. Klein stayed with us cause he is family. Weiss. He's more of a father to us than the other guy ever was. Winter. Let's go see mom. They look around the house and see a light on in one of the rooms, the door is slightly open. They hear their mother laughing. Weiss decides to go and surprise her by announcing herself as she almost storms in. Weiss. Hey mom I'm who my gods. She sees her mother in second base with Klein her mother and Klein immediately cover themselves and separate, Winter and Weiss are completely frozen and can't look away. The two are now fully clothed after a few seconds. Willow. Weiss. Winter. Haven't you heard of knocking? Klein. Oh my dear snowflakes, I a welcome home. The sisters slowly look at each other and cheer. Weiss. Finally. Winter. About time. Willow and Klein. Beg pardon. Weiss. We've been praying for this to happen. Willow. What? Whitley appears. Whitley. Who screamed? Our guests are worried. Winter. Mom and Klein are dating. Whitley. Yeah, real shocker. We have guests and dinner is ready. Winter. Wait you knew about this. Whitley. Yes because I live here. Mom, Dad, I'll tell our guests you'll be joining them shortly. He walks away. Klein is super happy to hear Whitley call him his dad. Weiss. Let's have dinner together as a family. The sisters leave. Klein. They wanted us to date. Willow. Well if you look back, you've been a father figure to all three of them since they were kids. Klein. I got to see them grow up Willow. I just wish I could have tried harder to make them smile. Willow. If you did then Bushface would have tried harder to break them. They know you were there for them and still are. I wasn't but I am now. Come on honey. She smacks his ass. Klein. Whoa ho ho ho. His eyes turn red and his other personality takes over. Klein. So you like rough? Oh we'll be real rough when the kids are asleep. His eyes then turn back to brown, and he's back to his usual self. Klein. Clear his throat well shall we my lady. Willow. Ha ha oh my such a gentleman. They walk to the dining room holding hands. Nora introduced herself and her grandmother, Winter explains that Freya is like a grandmother to her. Everyone gets a loving and caring vibe from her, and they understand exactly how Winter feels, Nora didn't leave her grandmother's side for one second. They set a room for Nora to stay in for a while, she's got her family back and wants to spend as much time as she can she's old and getting weaker, but after being reunited with her granddaughter and becoming part of the Schnee family, she's happier than ever. Winter, Weiss and Whitley accept Klein as their true father. He's so happy that he cried a little. He and Whitley help Willow in any way they can, Weiss misses the few memories she made in the manor, but this house has already become a home. The next day Freya asked Nora about her mother, Nora told her that they were going through Kuroiri village one day, and the Grimm attacked, she got separated and never found her again. Freya heard tales of that Grimm and knew that there are usually no survivors, Nora and Ren are the first two to survive, thanks to Ren's semblance, after Nora told her that she met Ren as a fellow survivor, they grew close, traveled, trained, got into Beacon, and now helping fight Salem. Freya was worried, but seeing how strong the young generation is and how they have a good start, her faith in them grows. Nora didn't slack off however, she trained with Winter and Weiss. Freya is seeing her granddaughter trying her best, growing stronger and learning little by little from each sparring match. Weiss sent her location to her friends. Issei would visit along with Nora's team. Freya would get to know them, see their team attacks when fighting Weiss using her balance breaker, Freya would teach Winter and Pura on how to use their powers combined with their semblances. Pura despite having only half the Fall Maiden powers is still very strong, matching Winter's level. Raven would go to check on the tribe, and Issei would watch her in case she tried anything. She wasn't going to make that mistake again, and after finally feeling like a real mother to Yang, she wasn't going to leave her either. Team RWBY and JNPR met Flint and Neon again, Issei would train with the Ace Ops, and he gave them one hell of a challenge. He would also increase the power of dust crystals, and the experiments began to stabilize them. During his free time at night he would put on his headphones and walk to the edge of Atlas, he would then lean over the edge, close his eyes and let gravity do the work, while Yang would lay awake at night wondering where he is, he's hardly hangs out outside of class in Atlas Academy. Oz been appointed Glinda as headmistress, and Amber is now her assistant. Two days have passed, Yang's injured arm still hurts, John heals her, but it just starts to hurt again, another test shows that the nerves are deteriorating, whatever Adam laced his sword with has permanently damaged her arm, and it'll spread all the way to her shoulder. 
her arm can still be used for daily activities, but she can't fight with that arm, she's considering getting her arm amputated and replaced with a prosthetic, but the doctors said that it goes against their code and ethics. As long as the limb is still useful even a little then amputation is unnecessary. Everyone including the general himself tried to console her, but nothing worked, she was devastated, a close-range fighter who fights using her fists, can't fight with only one arm. Every time she tried to use her arm in workouts or training, the pain would increase, her doctors told her to stop otherwise it'll only get worse. She would wonder where Issei is at times because he hasn't talked to her or asked her how she's doing. He's hardly talked to anyone and spends time with the Atlas scientists working on dust experiments, they have made some progress in just a few days. Issei boosted the power of the dust and it stayed stable, Issei convinced Ironwood to share some of the dust with the SDC, which later shared that with the faunas as a gesture of goodwill. There was unity between the three, Blake got a call from her father and said that the Faunas asked him to lead the White Fang, he accepted, and Blake is happy, she's giving all her support to him, and he's already making a difference. One night Issei is sitting on the rooftop bench, smoking a cigarette and listening to music. Yang finally found him, he was facing the edge, she sat next to him facing the opposite direction. Yang. Hey. Issei. Hey Yang. What are you doing up here so late? Yang. I could ask you the same thing. Issei. Yang. What do you think about when you're up here? Issei. Yang when someone spends their time in high altitudes, smoking drinking alone in the dead of night gazing at the stars they think about everything. Yang. Is it something we did to upset you? Issei. Not at all, I've just been busy. The experiments are working. Yang. That's good to hear. Issei. How's your arm? Yang. It's useless in a fight it hurts. They can't fix it. Issei. Sigh I was hoping Atlas could help. Yang. Well they can't. He looks at her arm, the scar from Adam's sword is clearly visible, she looks at him and then noticed the bandages on his arm. She can tell they are wrapped around his entire arm, even though he's wearing a full sleeve shirt. Yang. Looks like you got hurt too. Issei. Huh. Uh yeah. Yang. Issei I've seen your arm. It's covered in scales and you have claws can I see it? Issei. Close your eyes for two seconds. She closed her eyes, he made the gear disappear and pulled up his sleeve. Issei. Now you can look. She opened her eyes. She can see sharp claws protruding from the bandage wraps and a few glowing lights. He pulled on a knot and the bandages fell off. Yang sees his arm is mostly covered in scales of different colors, some are even glowing. Yang. Wow what happened? Where's your gauntlet? Issei. Don't worry about that, and as for the multicolored scales I experimented with dust in more ways than one. Yang. Did did you infuse your body with it? Issei. Yes. Now my scales are dust. Pick one. Yang. Wait, won't that hurt? Issei. Don't worry about that, they grow right back. Yang. If you say so. She hesitantly picks a white scale. Issei. Now load it into your gauntlet and fire but cover your eyes. She does so and then fires it upwards. Immediately there's a white flash. Even with her eyes closed she knows that there was a bright light. She opens her eyes and looks at him then back at his arm. She sees a new scale growing in its place. Issei. See what I mean? Yang. Yeah how did you do this? Those who tried all failed. Issei. I'm not like them Yang. I have my ways don't tell anyone about this. Not yet at least. Yang. Alright dot dot but Issei why wouldn't you talk to us or me? Issei. What do you mean? Of course we talk. Yang. You know what I mean we don't know when your birthday is, your favorite foods, what you think about your goals in life, what kind of girls you like. Issei knows what she's getting at but doesn't know how to respond, he can't tell Yang or anyone about who or what he really is. This is a fresh start and a good one. Issei. Yang well I'm 20 years old, I'm a sucker for noodles, my hobbies include hanging out with my friends and doing crazy things with them, flying around freely while listening to music and thinking about the universe. My goal in life to help people in any way I can. I don't like it when things are unnecessarily complicated. Yang. And what kind of girls do you like? He ignores that question. Yang. Issei are you gay? Issei. What? No 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 I'm straight as a ray of light. Yang. Then tell me what kind of girls you like. Issei. Well same as any guy with decent standards really. Yang. Cool. Issei. What kind of guys do you like? Yang. Strong both physically, mentally, emotionally makes puns. A damn good fighter and I especially love a person you can be yourself with and they with you. Issei. I'm sure you'll find someone like that. She's disappointed by his answer and knows that he's purposefully ignoring the hints. She continues to look at his arm and hold it. Issei. She feels his arm, it looks like it only changed externally, but it felt denser to her, harder and more durable. She unknowingly lets her aura flow into his arm, it's such a small amount that Issei doesn't even feel it. Yang. Your arm feels different now. Issei. I know. Yang. 
Your arm is so strong can I stay here with you for a while? I say. Sure thing. Want me to play some music? Yang. Sounds good thank you. I say. For what? Yang. You saved Blake and I from Adam and Beacon. You helped me reconnect with my mom and everything else thank you. She rests her head on his shoulder. I say. He plays a few songs. Yang hums along with the second song. They are both looking at the moon for a while, she then glances at him as he combed his long hair back using his hand, Yang sees the golden brown eyes shine in the moonlight, there's a fleck of green in there too. She didn't let go of his hand, and her aura continues to flow, none of them had a clue that the dragon's energy in his arm was slowly flowing into her left arm. After a while Yang started to feel sleepy and slowly slumped onto his lap. Issei stopped playing music on his scroll and slowly lifts her up, he takes her to her dorm where the others are still asleep. He puts her on her bed gently and leaves the room, he closes the door behind him as he does. Yang is dreaming and once again sees a red dragon sleeping. She approached it and was standing right next to its head. It's easily 10x her size. She was about to place her hand on it when the dragon suddenly opened its eyes and looked right at her, she's full of fear now and senses its power. She wakes up panting heavily. Ruby. Yang relax. It's okay. It was just a bad dream. She sees her sister and looks around. There's no dragon. Blake. You look like you saw a ghost. Yang. No it was just a dream. Sai how'd I get here. Blake. What? Didn't you come in yourself. Yang. No I was. Weiss. You were what? Yang. Nothing, yeah I remember now. I went out for some fresh air last night then came back. Weiss. Careful Yang, your crazy dreams are rivaling Nora's. They sure laugh. Yang noticed her arm hurt less than usual. Yang. I'll keep that in mind. Issei's hunch about Salem's location is right, Ironwood's drones found the barren wasteland to be infested with Grimm that could take out entire armies. His drones spread throughout the unnamed continent and found black pools everywhere from which Grimm spawned. Currently JNPR, RWBY, Ironwood, Winter, Ospin, Raven, Crow and Issei are watching the live feed. Raven. It's even worse than we thought. Winter. What do we do General? Ironwood. I prayed I would never have to use it. Crow. Use what? Ironwood takes out a key from a hidden compartment. Issei. Ha 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 time to nuke a witch. John. Nuke. Issei. It means to use a bomb with enough explosive force to destroy a large city or greater. Ironwood. I like this new term, we'll make it official, but the council forbade me from using this. Raven. To hell with that blow the bitch up. Issei. Let the drones find her first. Suddenly one of the drones loses signal. They check its last moments and see a castle surrounded by an army of Grimm. Ospin. Found her. Ironwood. Type in the coordinates Winter. Winter. Yes sir. She starts typing in the coordinates. Ironwood puts the key into the designated spot and twists it. He pressed a button, and from the edge of Atlas a missile silo opens. A missile is launched at high speeds. Everyone is watching from the window. But Salem. It was Arthur who hacked into the drone and made it land. Salem. So they know of our location. Watts. I'm afraid so my lady. Salem. No matter, Mercury go find Emerald and track down Cinder, I want her back alive and unharmed if possible, Hazel go with Mercury, Watts use this drone to drop them off in Mistral, and then get yourself to Atlas. I feel a change coming, one that won't be in our favor. They obey, hollow out the drone, but leaving in the necessary parts, it has enough space for three people. They fly away, Salem continues to build her forces, and after an hour or two they seize a small light in the sky. Salem. What is that? The light was now right above her and started to descend faster and faster. When it got close she saw that it's a missile. Salem. Really. The missile hit her castle and boom. They saw the live feed from the drones that still remained in the area. They say, Ospin. We're gonna need to make a new map of Remnant after a few dozen more of those. Everyone cheers, during the excitement Yang kisses Issei, only a select few saw her to that, what shocked them the most was Issei covering his mouth and backing away from her. Yang was about to apologize when Issei stopped her with only a hand gesture, he left the room after giving her a convincing fake smile. Blake, Weiss, Pura, Ruby, Raven and Ren are the ones who saw. For now they diverted their attention to the screen. There's nothing left for Miles starting from the point of impact. The three in the drone saw a tiny but bright flash of light, followed by a mushroom cloud. Mercury. Was that from Atlas? Watts. Yes and they are going to pay for that. But Issei. He went to his door man was panting as soon as he got close. Greg. Breath partner. Issei continues to take fast deep breaths, the instant she kissed him his mind it was flooded with memories of his cheating mates, he could feel their touch, their kisses, hear their voices, and almost feel like they are standing right next to him. He collapses on the floor, his wings completely limp, his head is spinning, his claws digging into the ground. The scales on his arm now protrude out of his skin all the way up to the shoulder, but that's not all. Dust crystals start growing on his body. Greg. 
Is say you're having an anxiety attack steady your breathing and focus on my voice. Divide 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 divide. After a minute or two the anxiety attack ceases. Is say gets up and the dust crystals fall off. Is say. Why did she do that? Greg. You know it's not her fault to say, she doesn't know, she couldn't have, and it happened in the heat of the moment. They say. Sai yeah that's true. Drag they still haunt me. Drag. I don't know what to do. They say then sees the dust crystals, he picks one up and sees it continue to grow little by little like a plant from a seed. He breaks it and it stopped growing. It only released a little bit of elemental energy, he gathered the rest of the crystals and flew out the window, he went to the fields and planted them. They continue to grow slowly, Issei left them there and went back to his dorm, where those who saw him leave the meeting are present including Yang. Raven. So what happened? Issei. I had an important errand. Ren. Issei. Issei. What? Yang. I'm sorry I didn't mean to. Issei. I get it, you got caught up in the moment and it caught me by surprise. It's okay. Blake. Issei why are there claw marks here? Issei. The previous tenant must have made those. Ruby. These are recent Issei what's happening to you? Issei. Let's go back to the others. He walks right by them, but Yang stops him. Yang. Guys I need a moment alone. They nod and leave. Yang. Issei I'm sorry about that. Issei. And I told you it's fine. Yang. It's not you look like you hated it. Issei. Sai Yang it's not that I hated it, it's just dot dot that it's complicated okay. I've got a lot on my mind and we declared war on Salem. We still have to find Cinder if she wasn't in that castle we I Sai dot let's just forget what happened in the office. Yang got a little angry. Yang. You want me to forget my first kiss. Issei. That was your first. Yang. Yes, Issei. Yang Sai dot dot your kiss is gentle. I'm honored but. Yang. But. Issei. I'm unworthy of it. I I can't do this. Yang. Issei. I'm sorry Yang. He leaves the room. Yang is left standing there. She is clearly upset but wants to know who hurt him to scare him from wanting love. She saw the drawer where he keeps his phone. She doesn't want to do this, but needs to find out who those people in the picture are. She takes it out, turns it on and opens the photo, she takes a picture of it from her scroll, turns off the phone and puts it right back. Yang. Forgive me. But Cinder. She's wearing a headed cloak and is in Mistral, she contacted Emerald from a burner scroll, it's been a day or two since she contacted her, she's in a motel room, laying low. She uses her semblance to make obsidian glass and fuse the pieces into an arm, she can use it little bit. Cinder. She should be here by now. Emerald knocks on the door in a certain way, Cinder knows that it's her and lets her in. Emerald. Glad to see you're okay Cinder. Cinder doesn't respond, but actually hugs her. Emerald. Hey it's okay, I'm here. Cinder. I need your help. I escaped Salem's castle, but I know she'll send the others to find us. Emerald. Then what do you want to do? Cinder. First things first. She removed her cloak, and Emerald sees her swollen abdomen, she looks pregnant. Emerald. Don't tell me. Cinder. I don't know what those Grimm did to me. Sniff dot dot I need help and you're the only one I can trust. Emerald. We're gonna fix it. Cinder. I hope so. She suddenly feels pain hurt her stomach and sits down, the swelling increased. The pain increased and she felt some kind of liquid coming out of her. Cinder. Something is coming. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.